Uh, so you show up into the pros, you, you got the number 55, and then finally mm -hmm. you change back into your college number 97, headed into the 1990s season. <laughs> did you feel better wearing 97 than you did 55? I, I did. Um, honestly, you know, we're all attached to our jersey numbers. Uh, Dropping back, pressure, and he is sacked. He loses the ball. Let's see it. It's picked up by the Bills and run in for a touchdown by Cornelius Bennett. How do you like that? And it just never set right, no matter how much altering I did to 55. It just. You know, I always wanted to be unique um, as a player, and I just thought 97 made me unique. And, you know, and I've always tried to play at 100 miles per hour anyway, so the number was as close to 100 as I can get. Hey, everybody, we are reliving the greatest moments in Bill's history through the eyes of the legends who created them. This is Bill's Legends Breakdown, powered by Microsoft Teams. I'm Steve Tasker, and I'm really pleased to be joined by my good friend, former teammate Cornelius Bennett, Biscuit. So great to finally have one of my guys on this. You played here for nine years, almost a full decade. You were here in Buffalo. You played a major role and were a major part of some really great Buffalo Bills football teams. You were in the Pro Bowl five times. You won the AFC Defensive Player of the Year Award twice. What's your greatest memory from your time here in Buffalo? Very first thing I would say, Steve, is walking out of um, the airport after I'd gotten traded here and meeting Bruce. At the Bruce was there picking up uh, either Carmen or his mother at the particular time, and um, just happened to be there at the same time. So he was the first guy I met, and and he told me immediately um, to to hook up with Daryl, and he would teach me the ropes right away. You arrived. I mean, it was a real buzz when you became a Buffalo Bill. You were involved in a ten-player trade that sent Eric Dickerson to the Indianapolis Colts and where the Bills traded Greg Bell and two first rounds and a second round draft pick to get you. How did your, how, from your end of it, how did the trade that brought you to Buffalo go down? We left Tuscaloosa, um, went to Atlanta and sat in Atlanta's airport knowing that a trade would happen. I, I knew a trade was gonna happen. They had already said they would trade me, but I didn't know where I was gonna go. And at the 11th hour, believe it or not, Cleveland made a big play, uh, but Buffalo came in and um, the offer, I guess, was too good for Indianapolis, especially getting the player, the caliber of Eric Dickerson. And the trade was done. And so I, after sitting in Atlanta airport for probably five or six, seven hours, uh, sitting in the crown room there, uh, headed to Buffalo. My personal career highlight tape lasts about three minutes. Yours goes uh -huh. on for hours. So let's, let's go ahead <laughs> and find, we talk off. We're gonna start with the last game. After the trade had happened, it was a strike year, but the last game of your rookie season, the Buffalo Bills were in Philadelphia and you get four sacks against Randall Cunningham. And it, for young people who don't remember, Randall Cunningham was like Michael Vick, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, prolific runner, then he could really sling it. And you went out as a rookie and ran all over the field and he could not get away from you. It was a career day, uh, to say the least. Um, I never you know, had four sacks again in my career, but um, man, it just, um, it's like uh, bursting through uh, wet tissue paper, believe it or not. I, you know, the, the I don't know if it, you know, being the last game of the season that those guys, um, you know, had their bags and cars packed, you know, headed for headed south for the all season or what. But the one thing that sticks in my craw about that game, I still didn't do enough for us to win. Uh, so that, so in the back of my mind, even though I had a career day, we lost the football game, and um, uh, so that, you know, kind of takes away from it. It's, it's a big sting. Right. Yeah, well, he, you, you ended mm -hmm. your rookie season with a big flourish, and the following year you picked right up. You got a career-high nine-and-a-half sacks. You were the first team All-Pro. You got named to your first Pro Bowl. What do you remember about that 1988 season that took the entire team really went to another level? Um, something clicked with us. I think that training camp, you know, we started hanging together down, you know, downtown Fredonia. Uh, right. I can recall how we all would get together uh, almost on a nightly basis. Um, to have team meetings. Yeah. <laughs> and, a lot of, a lot of important downtown. stuff. Being, a lot of important things got talked about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so okay. those, those kind of things or whatever. Yeah. And then us just buying into Coach Levy's philosophy. Um, and it and it just paid dividends. And, you know, we went on a run that yeah. still hasn't been done yet to, uh, to this day, Steve. And yeah. that's one of the greatest, greatest things of, of playing football is to 
to have those moments and 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 to be able to relive them with people that you love, like yourself, you know, and, and Bruce and Thurman and Daryl, and I think it was just a total desire of guys to want to win. Let's go back and look. There's a sack here. We Steve Grogan was in the league back then. He was at the end mm -hmm. of his career, and, and a third and twelve, and it was week three against the Patriots. How did you? You came off. Nobody looked at you. Nobody yeah. saw you, and Grogan. <laughs> Was standing there like he expected you to be blocked, so he didn't really try and run. You got a free shot. Well, I, I think, you know, he was, what, about 93 years old yeah, at the time right. with the neck roll. <laughs> I, I do remember that particular play, and I hit him as hard as I probably hit anybody in my NFL career. And I and I often do talk about this particular play. Um, hell, he, he never said a word. He just got up, got up and, you know, set, you know got ready for the next play or whatever. So it was... Um, yeah amazing playing against him first of all growing up basically watching him as a kid right you know because he played so long and um, you know hitting him um, man that was uh, like i said that was probably one of the hardest hits because again, nobody touched me i mean it was just a straight shot to to hit him as hard as i could and and he just got up and like nothing had happened i want to talk also a little bit about your first touchdown, 1990, you sparked a huge comeback against the Denver Broncos. The Bills were down 21 to nine in the fourth quarter. Uh, and then the Bills responded with 21 unanswered points in just a minute and what, 17 seconds. And it all started when Nate blocked a field goal and you caught it on the bounce and took it for an 80 yard touchdown. What do you remember yeah, about that? Kind of everything in a sense, uh, because it was almost like in slow motion to see um, Nate coming off the, the right corner there, coming in and, and blocking it. And it was just ideal. Seems like the ball hung in the air forever, you know. And I had a chance to look around and see if anybody was close to me before I caught the ball. And I was kind of already starting to, you know, catch the ball and, and, and trying to run, you know, because um, I, I figured if I if I got it, uh, nobody's going to catch me from behind. And, I you know, I knew that... Um, um, Treadwell was the closest guy to me during that 80 yards from Denver, but anybody else, you know, they, they had they had no chance of catching me. And running down their sideline with the ball, uh, looking at the guys' faces on the sideline, watching me run, again, I think that's when the football world took notice of how fast I actually was at, you know, 235, 40 pounds. You still got that football? Mm -hmm. No, I spiked it. Um, I started breaking <laughs> it down about 10 yards from – from about the 10 yard line, and I started breaking it down, you know, and, and trying to think of in my head what I was going to do. So it was just a, as soon as I crossed the, uh, the goal line, I spiked it. And um, I don't think, I don't, I don't know if I fell out or whatever. I mean, I was oxygen deprived <laughs> at that time in a way. So, <laughs> but no, I did not keep it. I did not. So let's go to 95. Yeah. <laughs> let's go to the first pick six you had against the Patriots. You, draw, you picked off Drew Bledsoe in Buffalo. Take me through if you can remember what happened on this play. I just, you know, dropped it. It was his own. I don't know if we were in cover four or something like that or whatever, but um, it's just like he just threw it right to him. I mean, he, I, you know, I think he wanted me to score. <laughs> he wanted to <laughs> yeah. give chase to me or something. I don't know, man. It was, but I think I went for like 64 yards in that one, I think, something like that. Yes. Uh, my son, you know, he, he yeah. he's shown me that one a few times. Uh, you know, they said I got, I, I locked up at about the 20-yard line. <laughs> you know, <laughs> returning that yeah. one. But, but it was, um, you know, I, I always fancied myself as a uh, glorified tight end anyway. Um, I always, I, I believe it or not, I used to tease with Coach Levy all the time about letting me play tight end. I would always mess with him about it. I'm like, I'm, I'm the best pass catching tight end. You, that's, that's not that's not playing tight end, Coach. I get so. you. <laughs> Biscuit, I can't thank you enough for being here with you. It's wonderful to see you. I miss you guys. I know that COVID-19 has kept us all apart for a while, but I can't wait to see you again and hang out. Go Bills. Go Bills. Love you, brother. I love you too, man. Thanks.